Good afternoon, everyone. For the Johnny Warren community, this is Anthony Siokas. I'm interviewing Ray Bartz and Cole Curran from the 1974 Socceroos squad uh, qualifying for Germany. Um, good afternoon, Ray. Good afternoon, Cole. Good afternoon. Nice to talk to you. Yesterday was Johnny Warren's uh, birthday, 17th of May. I know he was a good mate of yours, as well as a teammate. Yeah. What was he like as a bloke? What was he like as a mate? Yeah, well, Johnny was, um, you know, Johnny was a terrific bloke. You know, he was, uh, he was a very quiet sort of guy and, um, you know, different to the Johnny Warren we knew on the field. You know, Johnny on the field was a, was a terrific captain, a great leader and led by example and a, a player that would always give 110% commitment on the on the field off the park he was quite a lot a, a, a quiet personal sort of guy kept to himself a fair bit um, liked a nice quiet drink and you know a meal and a chat and the chat was always about football funny enough but um, yeah no he's a good fella Bun might have a different some different things to say yeah I, I agree with Ray actually uh, I room with Johnny a few times and uh, me coming from Newcastle we always Love the Newcastle people, especially from the uh, the way uh, the representatives come from. He, he'd always have a liking for Newcastle, and, and uh, we got on we got on really well. As Ray said, he was a he was a quite quite man, uh, uh, but on the field he was a he was a giant of a, of a man, a great player, good to play with, a good leader, and uh, uh, he'll never be forgotten in my eyes. Heading into the 1974 World Cup, of course, we know uh, infamously, or famously or infamously, what, what happened with you, Ray, uh, against Uruguay. Uh, Cole, you played in the 74 World Cup um, as a left back. What was the feeling around the camp once you uh, arrived in West Germany, particularly um, with Johnny? Well, we, we, Johnny had just come back uh, from his 14-month uh, layoff and he was all cleared to play and uh, everyone uh, was settled down uh, for the sake of Johnny back but, but uh, the, uh, the camp was a bit upset about Ray because I know from me, in my own heart that uh, if Ray had played, I think we would have cre created history there because the way Ray... Uh, could shoot and score goals and play on a perfect field uh, I think we would have would have done better we, we weren't expected to do any good but I think we we won the hearts of the German people as our uh, never say die attitude and uh, it all uh, it went quite well actually for just uh, butchers and bakers and candlestick makers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go too bad yeah. at all so as part-time players with 16 teams in the competition, uh, we've heard recently that the new FIFA president wants to expand the competition. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like um, in the qualification process uh, and you know, also for you, Cole, in the actual tournament, um, playing against teams of that calibre? Mm. Well, 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 I, I can talk about the qualification process first and foremost because, as you said, we're all part-time players, you know, and uh, there was only 16 teams qualified for Germany in those days and uh, only one team from Asia. You know, we had to be uh, not only the champion team from Asia, but, you know, we had to be the best. And uh, being all part-time players, it was, a, it, was, it was a difficult task, not only for a lot of the players to take time off work, um, there was no money involved, <laughs> similar like there is nowadays, you know, so we weren't compensated for loss of work or compensated for qualifying or whatever. So it, it was a hard task, but it was a, a, such a worthwhile, rewarding task that, you know, the team bonded so well together um, that at no stage, even when we were down in some games, uh, and the game that comes to mind is against South Korea, when we were down 2 0 in South Korea. Uh, at no stage did we think we were beaten and we, we pulled it back to a two-all draw over there. Uh, in those days, away goals uh, rule didn't apply, so we didn't automatically qualify. We had to go to the third and deciding game in Hong Kong. And even though we only won that game 1-0, it was a game that we never thought at any stage we would lose that game. We always felt we were in control. So it was a team that played with a lot of 
team spirit, a lot of harmony and a lot of confidence, you know. Um, and that was carried through into Germany against the, some of the best players in the world, you know, for, uh, as Bun said, for guys that had, you know, Manfred was a milkman, other guys are, you know, doing all these odd jobs and everything to play against the highly paid professionals, the best players in the world. Uh, you know, even though we didn't win a game, we drew against Chile, we weren't disgraced in any one of the three games, you know, so. How did yeah. you feel playing against some of those players? Oh, it was... I can still remember it like it was yesterday. We were playing against uh, full-time professionals with probably earning two and three hundred thousand dollars a season, where we might have been lucky to earn about ten thousand. Uh, were you getting was, that much? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they were. They were so good. So you could tell the the professionalism in them because it was it was hard to to uh, get near them. It was you know and. And that it was, it was just so so good. It was a privilege to play against them, and a on privilege that stage. To, on that stage, and a, yeah. another privilege to play in the World Cup when there was only 16 teams that qualified out of 200 countries or so. Mm. Uh, it was it was a tall order for us, and, and I think the team spirit and the mateship uh, got us through there. Yeah. After the first match, uh, Johnny got injured. Um, how how did you feel about him not participating any further? I know obviously from what he said in the past that he would have loved to have played against somebody like Franz Beckenbauer, for example. Um, he didn't play after the first game. Um, what impact do you think he would have made if he could have played on? Oh, I think he would have made a, a great impact because he, he wanted it so much. And... Uh, he would have, he would have, he would have give two hundred percent on that game against West Germany, against Beckenbauer mm. and Mool and, and players of that calibre. But uh, Johnny, when Johnny got injured, the, the whole team was was in a bit of a stable mate because we didn't know how we were going to su survive uh, without him in the midfield. Yeah. Mm. In your careers. Um, playing in a league that's obviously very different to what we see today in the A-League. I think a lot of the older generation who have uh, been around watching St George Budapest and Hakawa and Panhellenic and, and teams like, clubs like that, um, feel disengaged with some of the A-League uh, teams and the way in which football is going. There have been some ex-Socceroos, even from, from your generation, who have been outspoken about that. Mm. How do you both feel, uh, I guess I'll start with you, Ray, how do you feel about the past being integrated into the present and the future? Well, I, I don't think we <coughs> recognise the past as much as what we, we should do, and I think Football Australia is the main culprit in that, that area. I don't think there's any... Uh, there's no... Uh, memorabilia um, there's no history in the game you know and um, you know uh, you know I know that and a lot of people say oh F football Australia thinks that football in this country started in 1980 you know well we know very well that it dates back to the 1920s when we had Australian teams playing against New Zealand and so forth and through that era there was a lot of good players and they mightn't have had the media attention and the exposure that the current players do with the uh, television coverage and one thing or another, uh, but good players in any era could could adapt and play in any any area. They could play today, you know, with the training facilities, the grounds, the equipment, the balls, and whatever. They'd be better players now than whatever they were years ago. And you know, we need to recognise the players that have been before us. Um, you know, the, and uh, the Peter Allen, who wrote a, a book on Reg Date, for instance tells a story about Kevin O'Neill who worked in a coal mine in Cessnock and worked till 12 o'clock one day, hopped on a train, went to Newcastle to play an international game that afternoon, you know, after eight hours working in a coal mine. Can you imagine the current players doing that? You know, they talk about now if they've got to play two games a week, oh, the players are fatigued, they need a rest or whatever. And to, to a lot of us guys, we, I think we, they tend to pussyfoot around with the players and, and mollycoll them a little bit too much. Um, you know, we're, we were all part-time players and I, I know I had to leave home at 7 o'clock in the morning, go to work, work all day, train three nights a week, get home about 8.30 or 9 o'clock. Um, and then play a game at the weekend. You know, the players now train two hours a day, you know, on great 
training facilities, great balls, whatever, and they're looked after with masseurs and one thing or another. And good luck to them. It's a great era and, and they're well rewarded for it. But I don't think they should ignore the players that have been there and laid the platform for the benefits that they're reaping now. Excellent. And, and Cole, how do you feel about uh, the past? I mean, we don't have a museum. But you think about all of the memorabilia that's here at Jamboree, just on Johnny Warren, and then you, then you add all of the Socceroos memorabilia that is available, is around, yeah. uh, is around and you know, guys like, uh, you know, very famous guys like Rally Rasich, for example, have these things yeah. in their homes. Yeah. Uh, there are other people even around the world, guys like Andre Kruger, who's obviously a very famous German fan who sure. loves Australia. Yeah. Uh, they have memorabilia too. Sure. So this could all be put into uh, one central museum yeah. um, to increase uh, publicity, um, but also to give people the opportunity to see what the game is all about. Yeah, Not but I think it also recognises the history of the game, you yeah. know, and, you know, the, our opposing football codes have uh, are laid on with history, you know, they, they can tell you how many games Joe Blow played and how many goals he scored and, you know, 90% of the people working at Football Australia wouldn't even know Cole and myself. They wouldn't know who, us from Joe Blow, you know, so, um, and but the general public do, you know, the people that, that are passionate about the game know the history of the game and, you know, so we've, we've got to sort of respect people that have been there and done that, you know. Absolutely. Yes, I'm a bit disappointed in the, the way they, they haven't promoted the history of football. It's, it's I, uh, have turned away from football. I watch other codes, I follow other codes at the moment uh, because of that. And uh, I think it was ever since 2006 they've uh, destroyed all the, the federations, destroyed all the history of, of back, back to the 1900s. And I think that is important for, uh, it's important for me because I'll, I'll never desert my uh, players that I played with or, or what I've been taught about the players that played before me. I know them all, mm. and I think players of today should learn a little bit about uh, the history of uh, how we uh, made football good in this country. Absolutely, and when we're talking about Johnny, um, many people see him, and rightly so, as a visionary. When you were playing with him, did you sense that he was going to be as remembered or as famous or as important to the Australian game as as he has become? Well, Johnny was, you know, very popular. You know, Johnny, you know, was not only a great captain on the park, a great leader, he was also a, a, a great um, speaker or, you know, whenever he had to do an interview as a captain, he always used to project himself so well and say the right things at the right time. So, you know, with the charisma that Johnny had and, you know, the popularity that he had, you know, it was limitless to where, you know, he w would end up. But, I, th you know, we didn't envisage the TV in those days. They were only just starting television, you know, in the early 70s, and especially colour TV and one thing or another that, you know, anybody would make a career out of, you know, talking, you know, football on, on television in Australia. But, you know, but if anybody was capable of doing it, Johnny certainly was, yeah. Excellent. And, and Cole, your memories um, um, in, in terms of thinking about where he was at that time and, and perhaps how he got to where he got to? Well, I funny you say that because the, the times that I roomed with John, he was, uh, he was always studying. And I thought with, he must be studying for something to be somebody. And I, I thought with his, with his drive and his, his learning, uh, and that I, I knew there was something big, big for him to come and whichever it was I knew he would do well and everyone I speak to now still love Johnny Warren's show and thought he made sense and talked properly and, and uh, you know, it was I, I'll never forget him because he was a wonderful man. Mm. Back in the days when he was on SBS for example, a lot of people were watching the show to listen to what he had to say. Yeah. So, how did you feel at that time when, when he was on air? Were you either sitting at home or mm. looking at what he was saying or listening to what he was saying and saying, good on you, Johnny, we feel the same way? Were you 
very much about exactly. about the same path he was on? Yeah, well, he, you know, he, he obviously knew the game, and you know, and he always spoke with such common sense that you know we all tended to agree with what he said. So, you know, we'd always look forward to you know seeing Johnny on TV and whatever. And not only that, he would show his passion and commitment, and sometimes his emotions would come through, as we know when you know we finally qualified or, or whatever, you know. So. Um, you know, Johnny was Johnny, and you know it was always great to see him on there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so as I said, everyone watched him. He made sense, uh, and I agree with just about everything he said. Because he, he said because he, I think he knew the game inside and out. He studied it all his life, so he uh, he knew he knew a lot about the game, and uh, he, he expressed himself very good on the TV shows. Just finally, uh, gentlemen. Um, in 2006, obviously we qualified. Um, we've we've seen a, a huge change in the game. Um, what do you think Johnny would have thought about qualifying in 2006 um, and where the game is today? Well, he would have said about bloody time. <laughs> it was a 32-year gap from when and we, we'd had a couple of close shaves and a, a couple of unlucky, you know. World Cup campaigns and that, but he would have been as thrilled as what everybody was when we we did qualify. And we saw his disappointment in um, was it 2000 when he uh, I think broke down on on television. And um, but he, you know he would have been thrilled and you know and to keep the ball rolling for successive World Cup qualifying, uh, he would have been very proud of that. So yeah, he'd be up there smiling for sure. Fantastic. Yes, and I I, I agree with Ray. Uh, after the 2006 and onwards, he'd have been over the moon about the uh, qualifications every year for four or five World Cups uh, that Australia qualified for. He'd, he'd, he'd have been so jubilant that it would have been good to see. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, that Johnny always stood for was telling the truth, yeah. um, being honest and not playing any favourites with anyone mm -hmm. and putting the game first. Yeah. Um, do you think if he's, if he was here today, he would still be doing that with as much passion? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm Absolutely. sure he would be. Yeah, Absolutely. without a doubt. Yeah. Yes. Ray Bartz, Cole, Curran, very nice to talk to you. Really appreciate your time, no Johnny problem. Warren Community. Uh, thanks you for uh, having a chat with us today. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.